Here's a little gotcha with the setter board trunk. Uh, when I put the last coat of epoxy on it, uh, I figured it would be easier to just glue this on now while I've got it flat and it was already uh, coated with epoxy. But now I realize that uh, when I go to put this in the boat and I have to fiberglass tape around the bottom edge of the trunk, uh, it would have been easier to not have that little doubler piece in the way. So uh, I haven't glued the other one on the other side, so I'm going to wait to glue the other one. But um, yeah, hold off on this piece until you get the trunk uh, glassed into the boat. Here's another little task, uh, getting these forward stringers glued in, and I just uh, dry fit them and beveled the edges, and uh, I used a roundover bit to radius the tops of them. And uh, in my case, I had a really good fit between the stringers and the bottom of the boat, so I actually am holding them in place with a, a screw uh, right in the middle of the stringer that doesn't come all the way through. But you want to be careful if you do that not to uh, put a dent in the bottom of the boat because when you go to fair the bottom of the hull, uh, you'll have a you'll have a low spot right there where the screw was. So um, I had a tight fit, so I wasn't worried about it. And then I've got a little prop there uh, just because that end was was coming up on me. So that's the uh, forward stringers. Yesterday I got the uh, bow stringers in and uh, I got the third coat of epoxy in the cockpit. So today we're going to be doing the final sanding of the epoxy in the cockpit and we'll be gluing in the centerboard trunk. So I've got my random orbital sander and I'm going to be using uh, 80 grit sandpaper uh, to knock off the uh, any high spots and uh, smooth out the epoxy. Some of you might have been wondering um, about blush. What if, uh, what if you have blush? Uh, what is blush? Well, blush is basically um, a thin, greasy film uh, that will form on the surface of cured epoxy. Uh, this is um, the underside of the aft seat top, and I just coated it yesterday. And um, blush will come to the surface of the epoxy after it's cured and uh, one you can tell by uh, you know if you run your finger across the cured epoxy how greasy it feels and if it leaves a streak and uh, so this feels uh, not too bad but sometimes uh, it'll feel really slicky greasy almost as if there's like a soap on it um, and uh, it'll come up and you'll feel it on your fingers and so B&B uh, &B epoxy um, uh, brand, the brand that we use uh, doesn't seem to suffer from blush but uh, some other brands um, definitely suffer from blush so if you if your coated epoxy feels really greasy it's best to just wash it with some soap and water before you sand it um, but like I said I didn't have any uh, real bad blush. Um, I have just a little bit, but not enough to uh, worry about. Um, but if you have a lot, you should uh, wash your um, coated um, part with uh, just some soap and water with a rag and let it dry uh, before you sand it. Here's the centerboard trunk dry fitted. I've already um, cut these beams to length and I have marked where the trunk lines up on them. Uh, to make sure that the trunk goes in plumb. So I've already uh, level, uh, plumbed this end of the trunk 
and I've plumbed that end of the trunk with a level and um, so I've already cut all the beam parts there's four there's well there's five one two and then this one is split and then the four forward one is solid so the trunk with these in uh, should be plumb and the next thing you want to check is to make sure that the trunk is flush with the edges of the seat tops so just putting a straight edge across there um, I've got maybe a 30 second of inch of uh, difference which I'm not going to worry about and checking it across here it's pretty much dead on sorry for the shaky camera and if I go up to the front it's pretty much dead on there um, you know that's more than it than it looks like it is but uh, I'll, when I and so when I glue it I'll clamp it so that it lifts that up um, this, you can see this beam isn't perfectly straight either but when I glue it I'll clamp that and uh, I'll just make sure that I'm on the lines when I glue it and that will ensure that it uh, that it goes in plumb and then we're gonna put a big fillet along the bottom and then we'll put our fiberglass tape okay uh, we're pretty much ready to glue in the uh, centerboard trunk uh, so let's talk about the ways we could screw this up uh, the number one thing that you could do to screw up uh, the centerboard trunk would be to um, close off the actual gap in the trunk so that the trunk uh, so the centerboard won't actually fit in the trunk that would suck so we want to make sure that the um, trunk sides, uh, when they get glued in, are parallel to each other and straight. And so let's just have a look at, um, at my trunk. So this left side edge is going to be the edge that is against the keel batten. And if I take my straight edge to that, I can see that it's very straight, maybe just a slight hollow right here I've got about I don't know ten thousandths or so maybe thirty thousand twenty thirty thousandths and um, got a little bulge at this end but uh, not too worried about that now if I go to this side which of course is screwed up by my um, my doubler block again um, if I put it against that I can see that ooh I've got uh, a good um, almost an eighth of an inch of a uh, of bow so it's so it's about an eighth of an inch fat right here it's too wide um, I hope you can see that so um, what I'm gonna do is I've got these excess um, thickness blocks that when I that when I made the king posts I made extra of these the exact same thickness as my king post so if I slip this in at the king post it's exactly the same size as the trunk. Now if I put it back here, I got a lot of play. So if this was the center board, when the center board comes out, I'm going to have that much play on my center board. And then as I go to the front, it's pretty good there. And then up there, it's a nice snug fit again. So what I'm going to do in my case is I'm going to put this block right in the middle and see now when I squeeze the trunk, it, it becomes the right thickness. So I'm gonna just clamp this right there. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna put it about an inch or two in so I don't get any glue on it. I'm gonna flip this up and I'm gonna clamp, I'm gonna clamp that in place right here. And now, now I can't sit it flat. Okay, with that clamped in place, um, what I can do is when I put a little pressure here, it gets rid of that bow. And if I put my straight edge up while I do that, it's nice and straight. So it's just the right spot. So what I'm actually gonna do now 
is mark that position on the outside of the trunk with a pencil line and when I glue it in I'm going to put a prop right there to push on the trunk side and then when I get it dry fitted I'll make sure that's a straight line. So um, with that in there I'm going to go ahead and dry fit it. So here's my trunk and uh, I've got this um, second beam here. Okay, I'm using a screw. I'm using a screw at the front edge to hold that in place, and then I've got my um, my back edge or my back back of the trunk just held by that beam. And I've got pencil lines to mark that exactly where it should go. And now I'll use this other spacer to make sure that my spacing is still right there. So I might cut a piece and leave that in there because it's a little tight. And the spacing across the top is good. And um, if we check it across this edge, yeah, we still have that bow. So now I'll put my prop, which is just a um, little stick here and a piece of plywood and I um, actually need more. So here's another little piece of plywood. If I put my prop right there and I push, you can see it move. And now when I measure that, see how straight that is? It's nice and straight. It's really close to perfect. And I'll just check the other side. The other side is pretty good. So that's the dry fit. So if I were to glue it just like that, it would be perfect. Um, so this is something that you want to spend a little time making sure your dry fit looks parallel, straight, and you need to get you need to make yourself some of these um, some of these spacers so that you can test the uh, the spacing of your trunk and uh, be pretty confident that your centerboard is going to fit once this thing is glued in.
Okay, that's as far as I can get today because uh, I have to leave, but um, that's all right because uh, I won't be able to work on the boat tomorrow, and if I did the fiberglass tape here, then I wouldn't be able to sand it uh, while it was still green, or scrape it, that is, so um, it'll be easy to just scuff up that fillet I just did when I come back next weekend, and uh, we'll get the trunk glassed in. Then I ended up adding a, uh, a beam across there to pull that all into plane uh, a little bit last minute. And I also added this prop here uh, just because I noticed a small gap uh, against the keel batten on the back side. So that's just to push that in. And then we've got our prop here at our spacer. And that's, I checked that with a straight edge and it's very straight on both sides and the trunk is plumb. So everything, all, this trunk side should now be planar and plumb and um, and the centerboard should just uh, slide right in there real nice. Here's uh, also the view inside of my trunk. So there's the uh, aft end and I'll try to show you forward. So I've got pretty good squeeze out of the epoxy everywhere inside the trunk. Um, which is good, that's what you want. So what we'll do is, uh, when we flip the boat over, we'll run a uh, flush trim router bit from the underside to open the hole. And, um, and that will give us our actual centerboard hole. And just a couple more views of it. So I've got a really nice straight, straight line on either side and fill it down. That's it.